Welcome to class summits. So this shirt right here is what we are going to be making, including the color and everything. So I folded the fabric into two. This is a Duchess fabric into two for the front. We're going to be cutting the front first. Now I marked three lines. The first line is the CF line. That is the center front. The half inch following it is the where the button is going to be fixed. And the next line put together is one inch for button allowance. Okay. So the other part is where I'm going to be folding inside. Right. Because I will not be sewing on top of it. I'm going to use hemming gum to fold it inside so that it looks neat at the front. So our measurement for the shoulder and the neckline is going to be starting from the CF line. Okay, I'll mark shoulder divide by two and I'll drop it down by one and a half inch for the front. I first marked one inch, but I'm going to change it to one and a half inches for shoulder drop down. Now the neck width I'm using 2.5 inches from the CF line I marked 2.5 inches so I'm going to connect it down to this shoulder drop down. I hope this is clear. Use your hand to arrange it properly. Alright so I'm leaving the neck depth till I'm done. I'll mark my bust um, length which is 11 inches. I'll mark the waistline, no need for underbust, and then the hip and length of the shirt. Now, the measurement for the bust circumference, I'm starting from the bottom point, which is the half inch in between. I will add, I will measure my um, bust divide by four plus half inch ease allowance and then one inch seam allowance. So the shirt is not going to be too fitted, right? The same thing at the waistline. Now add the half an inch and then one inch seam allowance. This is where the shirt is going to hug the body but not tight. Now if you want it to be very free, you're going to be adding up to one inch, one and a half inch for ease allowance so that it becomes very free on your body. I marked the same thing down. Divide your hip into four plus half, half inch seam allowance and one inch seam allowance. Okay, like I said, half inch is the lowest that you can add. All right. If you want it to be more free, you know what to do. Increase the ease allowance. So from the bust line, I'll go up by 1.5 inches. This is to get the armhole line. Mark 1.5 inches up to get the armhole line. Okay, so I will measure the same thing I measured at the shoulder line. Um, my shoulder divide by two, but I'm going to be adding half an inch because this is cut directly on the fabric. So the half an inch is going to be for um, um same allowance at the shoulder. Okay, so I'll connect the line on a straight line like this right now the next thing is to locate the midpoint of the armhole line and then i'll take it inside a bit while curving the armhole just a bit right while curving the armhole okay so this is what we have you can see how beautiful it's coming out already looking like a shirt now the next step i took 2.75 I wanted to take 3 inches, but I took 2.75 because I'm still going to sew it. This is not a pattern that I say add your seam allowance. Okay, so 2.75 is okay. When after cutting, you measure it, whatever it gives you. If it's not up to, you can still cut it more. But it's better not to be too wide than um, smaller. Okay, so... What I have in excess there is 1.5 inches, which I'm going to be using to fold the button hole and button allowance. Now at the hemline, I'll go up by 3 inches and then cuff the side this way. And turn this the other way around. 
to give me a nice curve. Now, when curving this, be sure to extend the measurements at the front part. Otherwise, the front will be looking like it is kind of short. That may be like half an inch more. Okay, so we cut and cut it out like this, right? I'm not going to cut this part complete. You can see the way I cut it. Now I've placed the front on another fabric. My black material was not enough, so I'm using this other fabric for the back side. And then at the CF line, you can see that the button extension, I did not include it in the back measurement. It's outside the measurement. Okay, so while placing it, be careful of how you place it. Otherwise, the back is going to have excess measurement. Now, the shoulder tip will come up by half an inch from what I marked at the front. I went up by half an inch so that the back can drop forward. Okay, this is freehand cutting, but trust me, it's going to come out beautiful just as you saw in the picture. So, we we'll connect the armhole and then I'm just going to start cutting. There's a little bit of allowance at the back armhole, as you can see. Now, the neck depth is just one inch depth for the back line, one inch. And I'll connect it to the um, neck point and cut it out. You can do one inch, you can do 0 0.05, whichever one is still going to be fine. Okay, so this is what we have. We're not going to join the shoulders, join the sides, and then finish the plackets. So what is remaining from the black material? I'm going to use it to cut the sleeve. I'll use it to cut the sleeve folded into four for both sleeves. I'll mark the length of my sleeve minus 2.5 inches for the sleeve curve. Okay, the band for the sleeve. And so whatever that is left is what I will mark. You may choose to add your seam allowance. Now I came down from the um, sleeve head by 5 inches. I will mark my bust divided by 3 plus 1.5 and then add extra 2 inches because I want it to be wide. Now at the base of the sleeve, I will just minus like 1 inch from what I did here because I also want to gather the base of the sleeve. Alright, it's going to be wide for gathering. So I'm just going to connect it from the armhole point. You can choose to do like this, you can choose to make it straight, whichever one you decide to do is fine. Okay, and then I'll connect the sleeve head this way. It's just too simple, too simple, too simple. Very easy. As you practice, you're going to learn and master it more. So this is the sleeve. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and join the um, shirt together and come back. So I've joined the shoulders together. You can see I've joined the shoulders. I've also joined the sides. Right now, the placket. This is the side you can choose to finish it whichever way, but I'm going to rip it now. The placket I folded it in using the one and a half inch, half inch is inside, and one inch is folded backwards. Right, I've not added the herring gum, I just used my pins to hold them together after ironing. So, after everything, I'm going to use the herring gum to fold this properly. Now the neckline, I'm going to measure it. Starting from the CF, the plackets are folded from one end to the other. It gave me 17.75. Okay, so I'll use the 17.75 to cut my collar. Don't forget to add seam allowance of half an inch. I folded this um, piece into, into two. The Beginning is folded, is unfold. So from the unfold part, I'm going to mark my 17.75 divided by 2. And at the end, I'll go up by 1 inch. 
we've done this over and over and over again in this channel okay you might want to see other videos to also confirm the measurements right so i'll mark the one inch and connect it down to this part on this part i'll mark 1.5 inch normally it's supposed to be one inch but the 1.5 inch is a cost of seam allowance so by the time i finish sewing it it will return to one inch so i'll connect it this way at the top i'll go up by half an inch and connect to this one inch that i'm going to mark here and curve the base of the collar right so I'll connect it to the half inch at the folded part like so now from that half inch i'm going to mark 2.5 inches which includes my seam allowance and here i mark three inches which includes my seam allowance and i'll connect them together like so okay now i'm going to slant it but first i want to get a straight line then add one inch by the side and slant it right you can choose to keep it straight the way it is depending on the shape of the color that you want but I choose to curve it to slant it rather so i'm just going to add the seam allowance i said do not forget or i was already forgetting the half inch for um finishing the color all right so we go ahead and cut it out we go ahead and cut it out okay lest i forget ladies and gentlemen please if you've not subscribed to this channel this is the time you have the opportunity to do so please subscribe before you come back and finish this video all right please do so subscribe turn on the notification button and um, watch the video till the end and i will see you in our next video okay so let's continue not buy yet let's continue so i'll cut this other part i'll cut and i'll cut remember that one part is closed now after cutting this i'm going to cut another one for each of them so we have two two for each of this row color and slanting color okay so i'll cut an iron sd on it as you can see i'll put this bigger one together and join it here here and here right so that is what we're going to do now as you can see i've joined it together and i've turned it and ironed it so i'll locate the midpoint of all the um color and i'll put the, them together midpoint to midpoint first one standing color is down place this row color and then place this another standing color on top of it and i'll stitch it this way right round okay so that is how I'm going to stitch it right round. After the stitching and ironing, this is what we have. I will now locate the midpoint of the neckline and midpoint of the collar and join them together. And join them one part of it together and then use the other part to fold it over. You can see how it is. I use hemming gum to hold it down first, after which I'm going to top stitch on it. Now this is the sleeve. We want to create a um, sleeve for the shirt and we're going to be having opening at the cuff. Okay, so I want to use four inches. Now this is what I'll do. Divide the base into two and then divide into two again. The two sleeves are put together. So I'm having like four inches from one side. The two sleeves are put together right side to right side okay so the opening at the sleeve this is where it's going to be i'll mark four inches from the base up and i'll slit it open now when you slit this open you're, you're no longer going to fix the sleeve anyhow 
one part will be for the right side and the other part will be for the left side. If you mix it up, your sleeve is going to look funny. Okay. This is how it's going to be. This is for the right side. And this is for the left side. Okay. The bigger part is facing towards the left hand side. And this is facing this part. All right. So this is the cuff. I measured 2.5 inch, including my seam allowance, folded into two. And I ironed S day on it. So I'll stitch the sides, the sides, turn it, I'll turn it this way and stitch right side to right side on the two curves. So I will get my sleeve. Before I fix the curve, I'm going to use this um, band that I did here to finish the opening that I opened. I don't know what I'm speaking again, but I believe you understand the video very well. Okay, so I will use that to finish that slit completely. Right, then before fixing the curve, I will gather the sleeve, the base of the sleeve, and fix it into the curve. Tara and our shirt is ready. Thank you for watching. Bye.